Welcome to our weekly mini session. Each week we will deliver a bite-sized workshop on hot topics. These workshops are live on our main Facebook page as well as our certified teachers group. We also have them recorded so you can reference all of our previous topics on the Accra Dance Resource Center. Be sure to let us know where you're from in the comments below. Today's topic is thoracic mobility exercises to increase articulation through the spine. We have special guest teacher, Sarah Reese with us. Sarah has a bachelor's degree in kinesiology, studied contemporary dance at Simon Fraser University and completed a second degree in education. She also has a master's degree in human performance coaching science, sciences. She has split her time in many different careers as a stunt double in the thriving Vancouver scene, performance career where she worked on various projects including cruise ship, cruise ship contracts, print television, film and nightlife productions. When not touring as a public speaker, Sarah is the director of a large competition and manages a physiotherapy clinic, among other small businesses. Sarah has spent the last decade touring wor worldwide, presenting at various universities, dance conventions, and conferences, and can also be seen live from Los Angeles with CLI Studios. We are lucky to also have Sarah as an acrobatic arts course conductor and examiner. It is so lovely to have you again, Sarah. Take it away. I think you're still muted a little, Sarah. There we go. There we go. The mute and the unmute. It's the it's like the, the theme of the year. Hi, friends. I'm very excited to be here today. We're going to talk about thoracic mobility. And um, I just want to talk a little bit about um, flexibility before um, I get in and show you some exercises that will help you with your students who are uh, struggling in their thoracic range. So um, talking about flexibility first, I just want to remind you that you have three different types of dancers who are coming into your studio on the average day basis. And the, the, makeup, the makeup of the makeup of your class is going to be such that you're going to have um, a large percentage of your students that are going to be what I would call regular uh, flexibility students. So the good news about the regular flexibility students are they're going to come to class and they're going to get better. They're going to get more flexible when they stretch and they practice. And that is the ideal scenario because obviously um, the dancers that are coming in and they're not seeing the gains, it's really um, hard on their um, confidence and their desire to keep working and working at something when they're just not seeing those gains. So the regular or their normal students, um, they'll be coming into class, they'll be working at home, they'll be seeing the flexibility gains, they'll be rewarded for that effort, and um, that works very nicely for you, the teacher. Um, the second type of student you're going to have are the hypermobile students. And a reminder that the hypermobile hypermobility is talking about the hypermobility of the joints. Um, so always be looking for things like um, uh, upset tummy, um, so um, complaints about um, belly sickness, um, complaints about fatigue, sore muscles, um, constant rolling of the ankles, um, things like headaches, um, irritability, that kind of thing. Those are often signals that there, there's a hypermobility syndrome syndrome happening. And it can be um, a, just a little bit more serious than just a dancer who might just have some general hypermobility in some of their joints. So definitely be looking for that and consult with your practitioners if you're seeing that. Your hypermobile students, we really want to be working on the strengthening of the muscle tissues to uh, in particular around supporting the joints. Um, we really want to, want to be working on stability and strength with those hypermobile students. The third type of dancer, so we have your normal dancers that come in and get gains through um, flexibility training. You have your hypermobile dancers. And the last set of dancers you have are your mobi mobility restricted dancers. And those comes in different forms. You can have restriction in your dural system or your central nervous system. You can have restrictions um, that come about from post-trauma, um, which could be because of something psychological, or there could be a serious injury that existed um, years ago that is still, the body is still holding itself in a state of tension because of that injury or that psychological trauma. Um, and you can have restrictions in things like your fascia systems, um, particularly as we talk about the thoracic, we know that there's fascia lines that start um, on the top of the head, uh, cross, 
and run through the back. So if there's a lot of tight fascia happening there, you will see restrictions in the cervical spine, which will um, translate into restrictions in the thoracic spine, um, as well as anatomical restrictions. So when we're talking about anatomical restrictions, what we're talking about is the actual anatomy of that dancer. So if you take example for the hip, um, if we're looking at the, the hip structure, the pelvis, um, some dancers, the, the head, uh, the sockets, the acetabulum of the hip may face more forward than other dancers. So there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we often think that there's something wrong with our dancer. If you think of an evolutionary perspective, we were not built to do the middle splits. Um, apes and monkeys are not doing the middle splits anatomically speaking. So our hip structure wasn't actually designed to do that. So if we have dancers that have some blockage in their hips when they're doing middle splits because of their anatomical structure, there's nothing wrong with these dancers. They're quite healthy and quite um, uh, healthy human bodies. We're just expecting a lot of them in dance. Um, and so do keep that in mind. If your dancer's hip um, acetabulums face more forward, when that dancer tries to go into a second position, they may feel that there's a restriction or a blockage. Um, they'll say things like crunching, um, uh, blocked, I'm stuck, I'm frozen, I'm locked, I feel like I'm going to break. Those are all um, words that they're using to describe that bone on bone blockage that might be an anatomical um, restriction on their flexibility and have little to do with the actual muscle tissue. So again, those are your three types of dancers, your normal dancers who get better with flexibility training and see the gains faster and um, are easily motivated, your hypermobile dancers who already have a lot of flexibility through their joints, and we want to be supporting that through strength and stability training, and then your mobility restricted dancers. Um, and figuring out what is the type of mobility restriction that they're having. Is it coming from their nervous system? Is it coming from a post-trauma, a psychological um, stress? Is there a previous injury happening there? Is their fascia system tight? Um, could they benefit from flexibility, or sorry, from flexibility assistant through massage, getting through the suboccipital at the back of their neck, um, relaxing through their shoulders? Um, is it an anatomical restriction, such as just the way that their bony structure is aligned? And then your job now as an educator is to figure out what is the mobility restriction and how can we best address that? Um, so now let's, let's talk about the thoracic part of the equation when we're talking about flexibility training. So um, I think my, my grandmother would say something like, when I was a kid, it was 25 cents to go get a hot dog and a pop at the movie theater. And I would say, in my generation, there was a pandemic and we couldn't go to the movies. Um, or um, what, what I mean by this kind of um, thinking is, I've been teaching now for over 20 years. And when I first started teaching, uh, the kids were already doing cartwheels when they came to me. So they were playing outside in the grass. They were doing cartwheels at school. Um, they were teaching their friends how to do cartwheels. Kids were not afraid to do cartwheels. They were rolling and log rolling and um, flipping and doing those kinds of things on the playground. And uh, they were doing this at home and almost kicking the coffee table. The parents got frustrated. They brought them into acro class push them to me like here, make this go away, or at least make it safe. Um, so kids were coming to me with those skills. Now at the um, tail end here of my career, kids are not cartwheeling when they come to me, they come with um, a completely different sort of um, body experience than the students I taught 20 years ago. They're not comfortable um, tucking their head and working through their cervical spine. They're not comfortable um, in their thoracic spine. Their shoulders are more rolled forward. So I'm seeing because of a lot of the texting and a lot of the screen time, we have, we have more of this concave sort of um, shape happening that results in um, a discomfort when we open up into our bridge work. Um, sometimes they're even carrying stress in there and we get a lot of resistance from the dancers moving in that sort of um, action and they can't they can't do these cartwheels they don't have those um, 
planes, those planes of motions, the sagittal planes and those um, understanding like they used to. Um, and so I would say um, technology killed the cartwheel. And I, I wrote a blog about that um, some time ago. And I think that's even becoming more and more common. So we will see probably going into the future, um, these changes in behavior adapt, making adaptations to our, our body. And I think we're going to see more tightness in the hamstrings in dancers as we get more of this rolled out spine happening. Um, and we might see um, traces to um, things happening with the knees or things happening with the lumbar spine because of this um, changes in how people are using their bodies. So um, be mindful of that. Um, always encourage your students of, of all um, your jazz dancers, your ballet dancers, your acro dancers to really be regularly opening up through the back because of how they are using their bodies now differently. So let's talk about flexibility in the thoracic spine. Um, so again, this cervical posture is changing with the screen use and the cell phone use. And so we're getting a lot of chin down more. So um, gently encouraging your students to be mindful of how they're using um, their neck and how they're carrying their upper body so that they can develop the posture that they need to have um, gains through their thoracic. If we are going to see more of this, um, we will be linking a lot of that to more headaches. So you might see that headaches are rising in the students that you're teaching compared to 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Um, that has a lot to do with posture. So I'm not necessarily saying that this generation has poorer posture than the previous generation. Um, I'm just saying I'm seeing differences in how they are comfortable with their body, how they're using their body, and um, there's definitely changes happening um, in the carriage of their upper body. So um, something to keep in mind. The other thing I want to talk about quickly that I think goes under addressed in flexibility training, uh, particularly in acrobatics, is talking about our sleep patterns. So um, stomach sleepers um, tend to have all sorts of um, problems that can manifest because they're stomach sleepers. So for example, if you can think of the body and imagine the kink that you would have if your head was turned to the side for, for eight hours. So if you were in your every day and your face was turned like this for eight hours, you would have quite a big kink and um, tightness in your neck. Now, why would we assume that that's any different if we're sleeping? So a lot of these dancers are sleeping, their head is turned, they often have one knee or one hip sort of popped up. Now their spine is in a slightly um, curved uh, position. We're really loaded heavily into that back um, uh, sacro uh, hip area. Uh, our, our neck is now and turn for eight hours. And then we're expecting that nothing is um, arising from that. So if you have kids that are stomach sleepers, really be mindful of um, adding massage into their um, flexibility training to help release the fascia and to help release any tension they're carrying through there. If you can switch that stomach sleeper to be a back sleeper, even better. I know I'm a stomach sleeper. So I'm practice what you preach kind of thing. I have tried to change this my whole life and I just can't. So I, um, I definitely make a point of switching which side I'm sleeping on um, in my pillow overnight if I remember to do that. So be encouraging your dancers to do things like that. That is absolutely going to affect the um, tightness um, in through the shoulders, through the thoracic, as well as the cervical spine. So um, Something else to think about is that generally um, dancers are having tight shoulders because acro is one of the only dance disciplines where we're really focusing on that. Yeah. So in our ballet and our jazz and our hip hop and our tap, we're not really doing a lot of shoulder stretching um, as we are doing like we're working on our splits and that kind of thing. But that doesn't carry over into our acro dance as much as um, perhaps we would like. So dancers are coming in with these tight shoulders, um, tight through the thoracic range, and they may only be getting those activities to help open up in their acro class. They might not be getting that in their hip hop and their tap and their jazz. So working with your faculty and encouraging um, more frequently visiting the shoulder opener stretches 
um, in those other flexibility classes in their warmups and their jazz and those types of things will help your acro program collectively. So be mindful of the fact that they might not be getting enough um, time in those shoulder openings to combat some of the problems I've been talking about. And again, the um, fascia release and um, working through that cervical spine to release that. I would also encourage you to work on releasing your calves. So getting a um, lacrosse ball and having dancers um, roll on it and shake on it to help release the calves. As I'm seeing, a lot of those bridges are actually quite um, restricted through the calves and through the Achilles tendon, as well as through the front of the hips and the hip flexors. So sometimes problems that we think are thoracic mobility problems can actually be restrictions through the calves, um, the Achilles tendons, and as well the um, hip flexors. So be looking for that. But now let's talk about uh, specifically the thoracic mobility exercises. I've put together a short video for you. It runs seven minutes in length. Um, I just didn't want to have to do the modeling myself. So I brought in a student who's going to show you um, a few simple mobility um, exercises that you can do. Um, there's so many great resources you can find on the internet. Um, here's just a few of my favorite. Um, I want to point out that um, I, I didn't do enough of um, using a stick. I'm really a fan of using like a broom stick to help dancers understand that opening up through there. So I only show a couple, but I encourage you to get one broomstick for your um, dance studio to help um, dancers understand and feel that opening. Um, before I show this video, there is one example where a dancer does a tondu, she goes into a needle and then she does um, a twisting motion. That's supposed to be done um, with square hips to help carry through to our square hip um, that we need in the acro and she actually opens up quite a bit. So I just wanted to, to mention that um, as you're watching, just keep in mind when we're doing that needlework, we want that to be quite a bit more square. But I will show you that um, video now um, to give you some ideas. Thoracic mobility. When we're looking for optimal functioning of the human body, we need to look at the kinetic chain and understand where there are needs for mobility and stability. It is best exemplified in the following picture. Stability of the cervical spine. Mobility of the thoracic spine. Stability of the lumbar spine. Mobility in the hips. Stability in the knees and mobility in the ankles. When we work towards this functionality, we can reduce injuries and reach our optimal performance. In terms of mobility development, a common area of struggle is the thoracic spine. We notice this in acrobats, particularly when they're working on their bridges. Before we move on to the exercises, let's take a look at a case study. Here's an example of a bridge with a dancer who is showing lack of mobility through the thoracic spine. As she recovers, you will notice that she skips through areas of the thoracic range. You can see that this dancer is popping her heels off the ground and is crunching a lot of her force into the lumbar lower back. As you may have seen at the module one course here at Acrobatic Arts, we suggest this dancer raises her feet onto a higher surface so that she can access more range in the shoulder. Let's take a look at a variety of thoracic mobility exercises we can do with this dancer to help her have better articulation of the spine and gain more range and mobility in her thoracic movements.
In this exercise, on her second side, you'll notice the dancer begins to pike in the hip, which may indicate to you there's also some tightness in the hip flexors. This exercise targets lateral hamstring flexibility, which often goes unnurtured in most flexibility programs. In addition, it requires strength and control to maintain balance while also adding the thoracic mobility range by having that twisting dynamic involved. When working in Cobra to increase flexibility, we can add towels to add a dynamic strength component. In this exercise, the dancer is opening through the chest to acquire more of the flexibility range through the thoracic. While holding this stretch, we can add a strength and conditioning element by adding a TheraBand. This will target the hip flexors, which is also a prominent action in the back walkover. Yeah, so that should give you some ideas um, that you can use. There are lots of different ways that you can play with um, getting fluidity through that part of the spine. Lots of amazing resources on the internet. Um, getting your dancers to do just a lot of roll through work, starting them at a very young age. So learning to roll through the spine, um, both forward bend and backward bends, and talking about those stacking of the vertebra one on top of each other. Um, as soon as they come into your students at a young age, into your classes at a young age, will help um, encourage them to understand that we want that to happen piece by piece and have that nice um, articulation of the spine. So I hope you found um, this information useful today in this um, weekly bite-sized mini lesson. Uh, thank you so much for having me and um, see you again. Thank you so much, Sarah, and thank you teachers for joining us for this weekly mini. You can learn more about acrobatic arts and our programs at acrobaticarts.com. Be sure to join us next week for a session on what is the Acro Dance Competition Adjudicator Program with special guest Sandra Elliott. See you then, everyone. Take care.